Godzilla vs. Megalon, Gojira Dui Megaro Gojira Tai Megaro is a 1973 Japanese science fiction kaiju film featuring Godzilla, produced and distributed by Toho. The film is directed and co-written by Jun Fukuda with special effects by Teriyoshi Nakano and stars Katsuhiko Sasaki, Hiroyuki Kawase, Yutaka Hayashi, and Robert Dunham, with Shinji Takagi as Godzilla, Hideto Date as Megalon, Sugatoshi Komada as Jet Jaguar, and Kenpachiro Satsuma as Gigan. It is the 13th film in the Godzilla franchise and Showa series. The film was released in Japan on March 17, 1973 and theatrically in the United States in the summer of 1976 by Cinema Shares. Topic. Plot In the first part of 1971 197X in the Japanese version, the most recent underground nuclear test, set off near the Aleutians, sends shockwaves as far across the globe as Monster Island in the South Pacific, disturbing monsters such as Godzilla, Anguirus, and Rodan. For years, Seatopia, an undersea civilization, has been heavily affected by this nuclear testing conducted by the surface nations of the world. Upset by these tests, the Cetopians plan to unleash their civilization's beetle-like cyborg god, Megalon, to destroy the surface world out of vengeance. On the surface, an inventor named Goro Ibuki, his nephew Rokuro, and Goro's friend Hiroshi Jinkao are off on an outing near a lake when Cetopia makes itself known to the Earth by drying up the lake the trio was relaxing nearby and using it as a base of operation. As they return home they are ambushed by agents of Cetopia who are trying to steal Jet Jaguar, a humanoid robot under construction by the trio of inventors. However the agent's first attempt is botched and they are forced to flee to safety. Some time later, Jet Jaguar is completed but the trio of inventors are knocked unconscious by the returning Cetopian agents. The agent's plan is to use Jet Jaguar to guide and direct Megalon to destroy whatever city Cetopia commands it to do. Goro and Rokuro are sent to be killed, while Hiroshi is taken hostage. Megalon is finally released to the surface while Jet Jaguar is put under the control of the Cetopians and is used to guide Megalon to attack Tokyo with the Japan self-defense forces failing to defeat the monster. Eventually, the trio of heroes manage to escape the situation with the Cetopians and reunite to devise a plan to send Jet Jaguar to get Godzilla's help using Jet Jaguar's secondary control system. After uniting with Japan's defense force, Goro manages to regain control of Jet Jaguar and sends the robot to Monster Island to bring Godzilla to fight Megalon. Without a guide to control its actions, Megalon flails around relentlessly and aimlessly fighting with the defense force and destroying the outskirts of Tokyo. The Cetopians learn of Jet Jaguar's turn and thus send out a distress call to the space hunter Nebula M aliens from the previous film, to send Gigan to assist them. As Godzilla journeys to fight Megalon, Jet Jaguar programs into a safeguard mode and grows to gigantic proportions to face Megalon itself until Godzilla arrives. The battle is roughly at a standstill between Robot and Cyborg, until Gigan arrives and both Megalon and Gigan double-team against Jet Jaguar. Godzilla finally arrives to assist Jet Jaguar and the odds become even. After a long and brutal fight, Gigan and Megalon both retreat and Godzilla and Jet Jaguar shake hands on a job well done. Godzilla returns to Monster Island, and Jet Jaguar returns to its previous human-sized state and reunites with its inventors. Topic. Cast Topic Production Topic Development Godzilla vs. Megalon was originally planned as a non-Godzilla film, a solo vehicle for Jet Jaguar, which was the result of a contest Toho had for children in mid to late 1972. The winner of the contest was an elementary school student, who submitted the drawing of a robot called Red Arone. 
Redarone was turned into a monster suit, but when the child was shown the suit, he became upset because the suit did not resemble his original design. The boy's original design was white but the costume was colored red, blue and yellow. Redarone was used for publicity, but Toho had renamed the character Jet Jaguar and had special effects director Teriyoshi Nakano redesign the character, only keeping the colors from the Redarone suit. The Red Arone suit had a different head and wings. However, after doing some screen tests and storyboards, Toho figured Jet Jaguar would not be able to carry the film on his own, either in screen appearance or marketing value, so they shut the project down during pre-production. Nearly a month later, producer Tomoyuki Tanaka called in screenwriter Shinichi Sekizawa to revise the script to add Godzilla and Gigan. To make up for lost production time, the film was shot in a hasty three weeks. The production time totaled nearly six months from planning to finish. The film had three early treatments, each written by Shinichi Sekizawa, one was titled Godzilla vs. The Megalon Brothers, the Undersea Kingdom's annihilation strategy which was completed in September 1972. The second was titled Insect Monster Megalon vs. Godzilla, Undersea Kingdom's Annihilation Strategy, which was turned in on September 5, 1972, and the third draft was submitted in September 7, 1972. Topic. Creature design According to Teriyoshi Nakano, the Godzilla suit used in this film nicknamed the Megaro Goji suit was made in a week, making it the fastest Godzilla suit ever made to date. They did not have time to make the eyes work correctly, something they had more time to fix for Godzilla's five appearances on Toho's superhero TV series Zone Fighter 1973, which was produced around the same time. The Megalon suit was one of the heaviest suits produced since the 1954 Godzilla suit, which made it even more difficult to raise the Megalon suit via wires in certain scenes up to the point where Nakano almost decided to scrap those scenes altogether. Since the film was shot in the winter, Katsuhiko Sasaki stated that director Jun Fukuda gave him and Yutaka Hayashi a shot of whiskey to warm them up. The Gigan suit is similar to the previous design, but the suit was made thinner, less bulky, the horn on the head was less pointed, and the buzzsaw didn't move, since it was made of static pieces. This suit also has different sized back fins, a more circular visor, scales running up the back, sides of the neck and longer legs compared to the original version. Teriyoshi Nakano recalls how the film was rushed and that it took three weeks to shoot, stating, It went into productions without enough preparation. There was no time to ask Mr. Sekizawa to write the script, so Mr. Sekizawa kind of thought up the general story and director Fukuda wrote the screenplay. The screenplay was completed right before Crankin. Topic. Filming Like previous Godzilla films, Godzilla vs. Megalon heavily employs stock footage from previous Toho Godzilla films such as Mothra vs. Godzilla 1964, The War of the Gargantuous 1966, Abira, Horror of the Deep 1966, Destroy All Monsters 1968, Godzilla vs. Hedora 1971, and Godzilla vs. Gigan 1972. Topic. English versions In 1976, Cinema Shares gave Godzilla vs. Megalon a wide theatrical release in the United States and launched a massive marketing campaign for the film, along with the poster, buttons with one of the four monsters' faces on them were released. Given away at theatrical showings was a comic that told a simplified version of the film, which incorrectly named Jet Jaguar as Robot Man, and Gigan as Borodin. These incorrect names were also featured in the U.S. trailer. Initially, Cinema Shares screened Toho's international English version, but to ensure a G rating, several cuts were made, which resulted in the film running three minutes shorter than the original version, Godzilla vs. 
Megalon is the first Godzilla film to receive an American prime time network television premiere, where it was broadcast nationwide at 9 p.m. on NBC on March 15, 1977. However, to accommodate commercials, the film was only shown in a one-hour time slot, which resulted in the film to be cut down to 48 minutes. John Belushi hosted the broadcast where he did some skits, all in a Godzilla suit. Mel Marin, who was president of Cinema Shares at the time, chose to release Godzilla vs. Megalon because he saw Godzilla as a heroic figure by that point and felt the timing was right to show children a hero who was a friendly monster and not Superman. The U.S. rights for the film eventually fell into the public domain in the late 1980s, which resulted in companies releasing poorly cropped, full screen VHS tapes mastered from pan and scan sources. This also led to the film being featured in Mystery Science Theater 3000. In 1988 New World Video intended to release the original uncut unedited version of the English dub but, declined the project, due to a lack of budget that was required for a full unedited release. However, despite this, the film was released uncut and in widescreen in 1992 by UK company Polygram Limited as a double feature with Godzilla vs. Gigan. In 1998 the film was again released by UK company, Forefront Video. As, of now it appears those are the only two VHS tapes on the film that are unedited and in high quality. It was also released on DVD by Power Multimedia in 1999 in Taiwan. Originally the Sci-Fi Channel showed the cut version, until finally in 2002 as Toho regained ownership of that title alongside Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla both which also were released by Cinema Shares and broadcast the film fully uncut for the first time in the US. Topic release Topic box office In Japan Godzilla vs Megalon sold approximately 980,000 tickets. It was the first Godzilla film to sell less than 1 million admissions. The film was a success in American theaters, earning $383,744 in its first three days in Texas and Louisiana alone. Topic. Critical reception Godzilla vs. Megalon was released theatrically in America on May 9, 1976, though the San Francisco Chronicle indicates that it opened there in June, and the New York Times indicates that it opened in New York City on July 11. The New York Times film critic Vincent Canby, who a decade before had given a negative review to Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, gave Godzilla vs. Megalon a generally positive review. In his review on July 12, 1976, Canby said, Godzilla vs. Megalon completes the canonization of Godzilla. It's been a remarkable transformation of character, the dragon has become Saint George. It's wildly preposterous, imaginative and funny, often intentionally. It demonstrates the rewards of friendship, between humans as well as monsters, and it is gentle. Godzilla vs. Megalon has attracted the ire of many Godzilla fans in the decades since its original release. The film contributed to the reputation of Godzilla films in the United States as cheap children's entertainment that should not be taken seriously. It has been described as incredibly, undeniably, mind-numbingly bad and one of the poorer moments in the history of kaiju films, in particular, the special effects of the film have been heavily criticized. One review described the Godzilla costume as appearing to be crossed with Kermit the Frog, and another sneeringly compared it to Godzilla vs. Gigan, stating that it did everything wrong that Gigan did, and then some. However, most of the criticism is of the lack of actual special effects work, as most of it consists of stock footage from previous films, including Godzilla vs. 
Gigan and Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, but a few pieces of effects work have garnered praise, specifically a scene where Megalon breaks through a dam and the draining of the lake, the other aspects of the film have been similarly skewered. The acting is usually described as flat and generally poor, and as not improving, or sometimes, worsening, the already weak script. One part of the film, on the other hand, has garnered almost universal praise, Godzilla's final attack on Megalon, a flying kick. It has been called the saving grace of the film, and was made famous by the mock exclamations of shock and awe displayed on Godzilla vs. Megalon's appearance on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Through the end of season 3 to the middle of season 5, that clip would be shown at the opening of each show. Despite all this, the film is also one of the most widely seen Godzilla films in the United States. It was popular in its initial theatrical release, largely due to an aggressive marketing campaign, including elaborate posters of the two title monsters battling atop New York City's World Trade Center towers, presumably to capitalize on the hype surrounding the Dino De Laurentiis remake of King Kong, which used a similar image for its own poster. Topic. Home media. The film was released numerous times in the VHS format, mostly as videos from Bargain Basement Studios that featured the edited TV version which was wrongly assumed to be in the public domain for many years, while Polygram and Forefront released the unedited version of the film in 1992 and 1998, respectively. Some rumors have circulated that the film's original VHS releases in the States were uncut, but there is no evidence confirming or denying this. Media Blasters acquired the DVD rights to both Godzilla vs. Megalon and Destroy All Monsters. Both films were released under one of the company's divisions, Tokyo Shock. Media Blasters originally planned to release Godzilla vs. Megalon on DVD and Blu-ray on December 20, 2011, however, due to technical difficulties with the dubbing and Toho having yet to give its approval for the release, the DVD, Blu-ray release was delayed. Media Blasters finally released the film on August 14, 2012, but only on a bare-bones DVD and Blu-ray. Also, a manufacturing error led to several copies of the originally planned version featuring bonus content to be released by accident. These special features versions are incredibly rare and are not labeled differently from the standard version, making them nearly impossible to find. This release was commercially the first to remaster the film to its original full-length version. In mid-late 2017, the Criterion Collection gained the rights to several Showa-era Godzilla films, including Godzilla vs. Megalon to be released on DVD and Blu-ray, digitally remastered and restored in HD. The release date is currently unknown at the time, but it is streaming currently through Stars Filmstruck. <laughs>